<laughs> wow, oh my gosh, you clicked on our thumbnail? We just put it out there and we didn't know anyone actually click on watch. Well, thank you, oh my God. The fact that Google pays to be the default search engine on many devices is well known, but thanks to a recent New York Times report and testimony coming out of the US v Google antitrust trial, we now know how much. $26.3 billion was paid out in 2021, with 18 billion of that going solely to Apple. That means Google is sacrificing almost one third of its profits from its entire ad business, including YouTube, so you can keep telling yourself you don't use Bing because it's just not as good. You're just a puppet, man! Bunch of Kermits there. Miss Piggy told me not to use it. The Times report claims that Google also worked on their own version of Apple's Spotlight for iPhones, promoted its Chrome browser to iPhone users, and tried to leverage the EU's Digital Markets Act to cut off Apple's potential search engine ambitions, like a vasectomy, but for ideas. This makes Apple and Google's relationship kind of complicated. Google is actively trying to hold Apple back from their full potential by paying them massive sums of money. It's like the most toxic relationship you've ever heard of. But they're the world's richest corporations and not people, so who are we to judge? Except under the US law. Love is love. The newly released Alan Wake 2 is drawing criticism for listing only GPUs with mesh shader support in its PC requirements, discouraging any graphics card older than Nvidia's RTX 20 series or AMD's RX 6000 series from touching the game. Like how back in third grade, Ali Watson was excluded from touching anything because she had cooties. While you can start up the game on older cards with no hardware mesh shaders, there's reasons to avoid doing so. Like the fact that you'll get this warning pop up that looks like like it traveled all the way from 1995 to stop you from making a terrible mistake. Sarah Connor, don't start that game. <laughs> we have to make sure your parents get married. Then there's the fact that at 1080p max settings without upscaling, an RX 5700 XT and a GTX 1080 Ti will perform worse than expected and get spanked by a GTX 1660 Ti and an RTX 3050. If you lower the settings and enable FSR, the 5700 XT will give playable frame rates, but it's wild that once trusty flagships like the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti are lucky to average 30 FPS. If this is where the industry is headed, gamers with older cards will be faced with costly decisions, not too dissimilar to when Ali Watson's family decided to move to a new school district. I hear she's in Alaska now. <laughs> the only thing she's touching is baby seals. Cooties can't thrive in the cold. Western Digital's planned merger with memory chip maker Keoxia has apparently stalled. Turns out this is because a key investor in Keoxia is the competing memory chip maker, SK Hynix. Hey, they may not like their competition, but damn it, they respect them enough to invest. But while respect is nice and all, I'm sure Japan's top three banks, as well as the state-backed Development Bank of Japan, are probably miffed about the paperwork they'll have to redo since they already authorized $12.7 billion to help finance the merger. Think about all the extra zeros they have to erase. Oh, to go all the way around the circle. This isn't the first time a Western Digital Keoxia merger has been attempted either. In 2021, a $20 billion deal completely fell apart, but even then the companies have circled each other, like star-crossed lovers, even becoming involved in a joint venture last year. Just let them get together already, SK Hynix. I've been writing fan fiction for two years. Don't blow this for me. I can't go back to the Potterverse. No, Ron, no! Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Jukebox. After already using Jukebox for some of our printing needs because we like them so much, we partnered up with them to release this one-of-a-kind LTT floppy disk sticker, designed by our very own Sarah Butt, that you can get for free! What? You can stick these on your phone, on your laptop, or anywhere stickers may stick. So head on over to lmg.gg slash jukebox floppy, use code Linus for 30% off any customer stickers, and nab a free floppy disk sticker. Don't try to put it in a computer. Oh, quick bits? Nah, dude. <laughs> sick bits. I don't like this. Sick bits. Oh, so sick. <laughs> Apple has released iOS and iPadOS 17.1, notably addressing recent problems with screen burn-in for the iPhone, improving AirDrop, and fixing a bug where the OS turned off privacy settings for significant locations and iPhone analytics. Significant locations, of course, being a feature that tracks and remembers places you visit often, like your work, your local cafe, and the fight club under the overpass. 
Riley, you're not supposed to talk every time. I'm dead. We gotta move now. The update also fixes a three-year-old security gap in iOS's private address feature, which was supposed to allow users to avoid being tracked while connecting to Wi-Fi networks, but instead just gave them the warm illusion of safety in a cold and perilous world, which is also worth something. Qualcomm has apparently snagged six more laptop OEMs for their upcoming ARM-based Snapdragon X Elite processors, including names like Asus, Dell, and Samsung. But Intel CEO and the world's most calm under pressure nerd, Pat Gelsinger, isn't afraid of any competition from ARM CPUs, despite efforts from not just Qualcomm, but also allegedly secret projects by both Nvidia and AMD. In fact, he's willing to build their chips with Intel's foundry. <sighs> this guy's tough. I'm already fan casting Dwayne Johnson to play him in the inevitable biopic. Who's Kevin Hart gonna be? Lisa Sue. We're the best! Google is launching About This Image, a tool to verify the origin and context of an image, including how long it's been available on Google search and which websites have used it in the past, like news outlets and fact checkers. And if that's not enough reassurance for you to trust that an image is real, you can try Leica's new M11P camera, which comes with built-in content credentials, stamping a digital photo with detailed metadata at the point of capture. You can't put a price on authenticity, but like it can because this thing costs $9,000. <laughs> In partnership with New Lab, Airspace Link, and the Michigan Department of Transportation, Ford is testing automated delivery drones at a giant 100-year-old train station that was closed in the late 1980s. The project covers a three mile radius around Michigan Central Station, which is 100% haunted, both by the spirit of 20th century industrialism and packs of feral train spotting enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> they love Ewan McGregor movies. And beloved hacker gadget Flipper Zero can now spam Windows and Android with Bluetooth alerts. Thanks to a new app called BLE Spam on GitHub that can make it difficult for a target to discern between legitimate Bluetooth devices and spoofs. The attack is actually based on a similar one used to target and crash iPhones. The spam app gives eight flood attack options, such as Apple device pop-up, Android device pair, Windows device found, and even every method combined. Because, I mean, why go one at a time when you can ruin everyone's day? But your day will only improve if you come back on Monday for more tech news. But first, hey, you know what? Why don't you get some rest? Enjoy your weekend. You could write a short, steamy romance about your two favorite companies. Their love is forbidden, but they can't fight their own hearts. Or their quarterly earnings. <laughs>